Welcome to the Wild Wisdom Podcast with Dr. Patricia Mills. I'm Dr. Patricia. This podcast is for people who want to transform their health, restore their hormones, and reconnect to their body's natural wisdom. Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia. I'm a Canadian medical doctor, published author, internationally recognized researcher, and passionate advocate for your health. Here, we'll explore the intersection between ancient wisdom and cutting-edge science, distilling the essence of true health into practical steps you can take. Wild wisdom is instinctive knowledge in action. Thanks for making this part of your day. So in the last uh, couple of episodes, I talked about um, hormone balancing through blood sugars. And um, I went at great lengths to explain how crucial it is to control your blood sugars. And I started off with blood sugars because that one is oftentimes the easiest one to for people to understand. And I want to now dive into another super important way to balance your hormones, and that's through the health of your gut. And what I find super interesting when, so I have this Facebook group for women, private free called Wild Wisdom for Women with Dr. Patricia Mills. And I give women the opportunity when they're uh, signing up to tell me what's their number one um, issue, health issue or thing they want to learn about. And there's a few themes and one of them is hormone health and the other one is gut health. And what I want you, the listener, to understand is that those two are completely linked. So in order for you to have good hormone health, you have to have good gut health. Okay. And in order for me to convey the importance and how this works for you, I'm going to have to paint a picture of your body that you may either have heard of if you're someone who follows um, the functional medicine teachings um, through other doctors, for example, um, or perhaps this is your very first time um, being introduced to topics around gut health like the microbiome. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I do want to do a deeper, deeper dive over the next few podcasts for you to really, really understand here what I'm talking about, because one of the crucial root causes of disease in today's society is that we are unknowingly doing things to hurt our internal microbiome which then affects the health of our gut, which then has downstream consequences throughout our entire body. So first, I'm going to start off with talking about what is the microbiome. And for those of you who have already heard of this, I invite you to listen to this with what we call a beginner's mind. I invite you to kind of forget everything you've learned up until now. And listen to what I have to say and allow my words to paint a picture uh, in your mind, okay, which is kind of fun. I find that people learn so much better when they can, th- when they can visualize the topic that's being spoken about, okay? So what's really, really cool is that we know now that the body is not uh, sterile, okay? The body is a home. For many other organisms, microorganisms, which are in the realm of viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi, those sorts of things, and wonderful creatures that we probably aren't even aware of yet, <laughs> to, you know, like undiscovered inner territories. And what we do know is that um, the, these organisms evolve with us since our conception, even, even in utero. And I've mentioned that before, where the, the um, amniotic fluid that houses us uh, is not necessarily sterile. And, and we additionally gain more of, um, you know, microorganisms in us and on us when we pass through the vaginal canal for birthing into the world. And uh, there's a certain kind of microorganisms that you get from your mother's vagina. And if you're bur- born through cesarean section, so through an incision of the uterus and through the abdomen, 
you get an entirely different population of microorganisms uh, at birth. And um, there are ways to correct for this because research shows that the population of microorganisms that you're exposed to through the vaginal canal is more supportive of your health than the ones that you get from basically the environment of the hospital. And one way to correct for this is through vaginal swabbing, so getting vaginal fluid from the mother and swabbing the baby after it's born through the cesarean section. And another way to correct for this is by being intentional with things like probiotics and fermented foods, which is more for another topic. But basically, I want you to know that you are born into this world what's as an organism that is actually full of other beings beyond yourself. And those organisms live everywhere. They live on your eye, they live on your tongue, on your skin. Um, the biggest ecosystem of these organisms is inside of your gut. So when I mean your gut, it's from the beginning of like your mouth all the way through your esophagus, your stomach, your small intestine, then your large intestine, and then your rectum. And just to give you an idea of like how big this system, this like other kind of organisms are within you, if I were to take all of the microorganisms living inside of your gut and I were to weigh them, on average, it weighs about 200 grams or the size of a small mango. Mm -hmm. And if I were to take all of the DNA of these organisms in your body and then take all of your DNA, and we were to put all of that DNA together, and I was look at I was to look at the percent of the DNA within that. That's you, the human DNA. It would be about ten percent. So you're only about ten percent human, okay? And there's an interesting book by that title that is really worth diving into. And these organisms um, can be helpful or harmful to your health, depending on whether or not they're comprised of um, the good guys more so than the bad guys. And again, um, more like the helpful rather than the harmful. I mean, in and of itself, they're not bad. You know, they're not out to get you. But our human frame co-evolved to be optimally working with a certain community of organisms. And that changes based on where you live, because that changes with the temperatures uh, of the climate you're exposed to. It changes with your gender. It changes with the times of the year. Um, and on a more short-term basis, they, it changes um, impacted by the foods that you're eating and the drinks that you're taking into your body and the medications that you're taking into your body. So those things go through the mouth and go into the esophagus, down into the stomach, and then down into the small intestine, and then into the large intestine or the colon. And the colon, the large intestine, just before the rectum where you poop out your poop, is where you tend to usually have most of that um, microbiome existing. Now, the reason I'm talking about um, gut health and hormones together is because research is showing now that the status of the health of your microbiome, so if you were to think of your microbiome as like an organism in and of itself that's living within you and assisting your daily functions, because that's what it does, the health of your of that organism of the microbiome, it has been linked, associated with um, the the presence of health or the presence of disease when it comes to hormone balance. So, as an example, research that has looked at what we're gonna call um, what's called sex related uh, hormone diseases. So, what do I mean by that? Um, those are things like polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, infertility. Let's talk about things like Alzheimer's and cancer, because a lot of cancer um, is driven by um, hormones, right? So when they look at individuals who have these conditions and they compare them to um, healthy controls, so people who do not have these conditions, Across the board, they show that the um, people with these conditions have a, a significant changes in their microbiome in a negative way compared to those who are healthy. And the changes tend to be towards the realm of having less diversity 
and having more of a certain kind of microorganism in the system and less of other kinds. So it's um, diversity. It's the quality as well. Okay. And in some cases, the quantity. And it's pretty fascinating because this is something that is just being recognized now. And now the, the state of research is to try to determine what comes first. Is it the chicken or is it the egg? And so what I mean by that is, is it that these people develop these conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, cancer, and then that affects the health of their microbiome? Or is it that something happens to the, to the health of the microbiome in the gut and that affects other tissues in the body and contributes to the formation of disease in those tissues? And that's pretty fascinating, actually, if you were to think about if, if it were true in humans that the health of your microbiome has downstream effects on other tissues in your body potentially contributing to disease, then you would be very curious and very interested in everything you could do to keep that organism within you, the microbiome, in optimal health. Okay. Now, in animal studies, they have shown that when you do things like, oh, there was some interesting studies where they took animals and they took the poop from unhealthy animals and transported them, like transplanted them into um, the healthy animals. And then the healthy animals developed the diseases of the unhealthy animals just from that microbiome transplant. So while it's no one would really ever want to do the study in humans, like take uh, someone with cancer and put the poop of that cancer person in a healthy person and see if that healthy person develops cancer, right? I mean, try to get the ethics board to be on board with that and try to get volunteers for that study. That would, I think that might never happen. So what the state that I'm in is I've seen enough research to strongly suggest that there is, at the very least, um, a connection between maintaining the health of your microbiome in order to prevent or reduce the severity of these diseases that have been linked to abnormalities and changes in your microbiome. And these diseases are not just limited to sex hormone conditions. The other diseases they've been linked with are those related to autoimmunity. So any condition in which your body starts to attack itself, uh, and it may be like a general attack, like systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE. It might be a specific attack against the lining of the nerves, like multiple sclerosis. It might be a specific attack against the thyroid like Hashimoto's thyroiditis or even Graves' disease where it's like an, like an autoantibody attaches to the um, thyroid and causes it to overact in, in its function, whereas Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the body actually like destroys the thyroid. It breaks it down. Um, both horrible conditions to acquire. Other conditions like rheumatoid arthritis where um, the lining of the joints so the joint tissues are attacked, have been linked to microbiome issues. Um, Alzheimer's has been linked to it. There have, have been very, very interesting studies in Parkinson's, in ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And um, my belief is that once uh, you know, the researchers start to systematically evaluate every chronic disease, they're going to see that there is some participation, at least, of the microbiome of it being dysfunctional, like and in poor health. Whether it came as a result of that condition or caused the condition, either way, you're going to see improvement if you get that microbiome back into good health. Because um, what we know is that the microbiome acts like an organ within us. It's like if you were to cut out your liver, you know, if you got rid of your microbiome, you would have 
things in your body that just wouldn't work. So what are some of those things? Well, your microbiome is the organ within you that digests your fiber. If you, you know all of that research on healthy fiber I mentioned before, right? I, I said this before that it's um, all of those benefits come from having the right kind of microbiome, eating your fiber, and pooping out the the super fuel ketone. Okay, these short chain fatty acids, and in fact, one of the tests that you can do with functional medicine or you know naturopathic medicine or those those practitioners who use like more advanced stool tests is they'll actually look at your poop to see if you have an overproduction of ketones or short chain fatty acids in your stool. And that tells you that you probably have an imbalance in your microbiome that they are overproducing. And you can also get underproduction. So you can either have too much of this going on or too little of it going on. Another thing that the microbiome does for you is it makes a lot of your B vitamins. Okay. And it makes a lot of your, and it makes your vitamin K2. Your body cannot make vitamin K2. It needs to get it either from the food, which is fermented foods, where the micro, the organisms in the fermented foods make it, or through your microbiome. And what is vitamin K2? That's the vitamin that is like the usher that sh- in your body that shows the calcium to go into the bone. So if the calcium is hanging out in your blood, you don't want that calcium to go into your tissues and start to cause calcification of your muscles or your ligaments or your tendons. You want that calcium to go into your bone. And so vitamin K2 is the usher that um, shows the calcium the way. So if you have an unhealthy microbiome or if you're not eating and or if you're not eating fermented foods, you're going to have a problem with sufficient vitamin K2, which will cause, which can cause downstream effects such as osteopenia and osteoporosis, which is fragile, uh, fragile bones, thin bones, right? which puts you at risk for bone fractures. The other thing that the microbiome does is it communicates with your immune system. And your immune system, 70% of it lives inside the lining of your gut, particularly in the small intestine, because that's where um, the body is setting up like headquarters to make sure that none of the organisms that you're eating with your food, like mold in your food or parasites in your food, right? It, the body hopes that the acid in your stomach will do its job, but it has like a second kind of like pass point where the immune system checks your food to make sure that your, your stomach acid did its job and killed off invaders. And if it didn't, at unwanted guests, let's say from, from your food, if it didn't, then your immune system is there in the lining of the gut in these little tissues headquarters called payers patches, and they're monitoring your food to make sure that nothing's coming in that shouldn't. And the microbiome that is living on the lining of your gut is communicating with the cells in in your immune system and notifying them of of the action going on in your gut. So it'll actually um, communicate to your immune systems that there's invaders present. Um, and, And that'll activate your immune system Uh, or it'll keep your immune system, um, in balance, so to speak. Okay. So it'll, it'll trigger or not trigger the immune system, depending on what's the state of what's in your gut, like inside your gut. And so that explains, that's one direct explanation as to how a problem with your microbiome can result in autoimmune conditions because If the communication between the microbiome and the immune system is altered because the microbiome got sick, right? Think of it as an organism that's getting sick. Um, Then the, the immune system now doesn't have that input and the immune system starts to not work optimally. Um, So that's one direct way that the, um, that a problem with your microbiome will cause a problem with your immune system and result in autoimmune conditions. So that's one, one way to look at it, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do now, uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to talk about indirect ways that the body can, um, that the health of the microbiome can affect the health of your tissues and cause issues like autoimmune diseases and influence your sex hormones. Thank you 
you for taking the time to listen to this podcast, Wild Wisdom with Dr. Patricia Mills. If you like this podcast, please take the time to like and subscribe. And please feel free to leave any comments and look below for the contact information if you want to connect with me directly. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful day, evening or night. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Just a reminder, this podcast is for educational purposes only. This podcast is not a substitute for a professional care doctor or other qualified medical professional. This podcast is provided with the understanding that it does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. If you are looking for help in your journey, it is important that you seek out a qualified health practitioner. If you would like to work with Dr. Patricia for her expert health transformation guidance, please email her at info at drpatriciamills.com to book a discovery call. You can also find Dr. Patricia on Instagram at Dr. Patricia Mills and Facebook at Wild Wisdom for Women with Dr. Patricia Mills, MD. For access to all of Dr. Patricia's educational videos and more amazing perks, consider becoming a Patreon member. Links are in the description of this episode. It is important to have an expert in your corner that can help you make the changes you crave, especially when it comes to your health. 